Let's look at what encouragement uh, the Lord has for us this morning. This morning, my meditation or my reflection, the vision of the Lord came from, uh, I saw a very strong hand. Then I saw this strong hand, the right hand, was hooing, taking a piece of rock out of the rock eternal. God was at work to make me my call and your call. And he took it. And of course he must have put it into that baby in the mother's womb. But every time when a spiritual womb is needed <coughs> and a new preparation, he hooed out this stone, took it into his hand and gripped it the naked stone. I was naked when you saw me in my mother's womb and at every time when he strips me of all my titles, abilities, strengths and takes me into quarry time, stonemason time, but it is not some iron tool that's dealing with me, the fingers of God. I might even say the five fingers of God, the palm of God, the right hand of God. This is COVID time. Reset, we learned that summons were sent and we are between summons and the warrant. Summons is the whole world was summoned. How they use resources in trades, fields, nations, everywhere. Uh, and, and he just said, I'm the great shepherd. I'm, 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 I, I have called an audit of resources. And when we begin, we have a little more time and we servants can only plead with others. So plead with your dad, mom, brother, sister, cousins, near friends, dear friends, neighbors, where you work, plead with them. That he rescues the perishing, time is short. And then we knew that warrant time will be issued when it's a court order, angels will go do it. We plant the wheat, angels are given the task to pick up tears, pull them out. So don't pull it out with your words and arguments and Facebook cobbles and social media anger venting. No. We are to be held in the hand of God at this time. And then after this preparation, he, he launches us. We become the Benjamin of his right hand. And Benjamin didn't have many qualifications. J Jacob the father said one thing about Benjamin. Moses said one verse about Benjamin. And why is he called Benjamin? Birthing him, his mother Rachel died near Bethlehem. And mother named him Benoni, son of my pain. You may have a history like that, some father fracture. Mother fractures are rare. Some work fracture as a student, you didn't excel. At this time, you may be going through some pains that uh, so much is lost or so much time is lost. What's my future? Benoni, son of my pain. Ben is son. Benoni is dying Rachel's name to Benjamin. Father named him Benjamin, son of my right hand. And he cling in great love to Joseph and Benjamin. And when Joseph was lost to Benjamin because he loved Rachel dearly. Then we remember Jabez's mother called him Jabez, pain. Every time Jabez's mother calls him Jabez, he hears pain. What a terrible thing for a child, isn't it? Then when Phinehas died, sons of Eli were wicked, they died. And his wife gave birth, Phinehas's wife gave birth and called the boy Ichabod. Kabod is glory, Ichabod is glory departed, no glory. Such a painful name. And then Eli also fell down, broke his neck. He was old and heavy and blind, fell off. Glory lost. Till Samuel came and Jacob, uh, David came and so on. Then Elimelech, his name was God is king because at the time Elimelech was born, Israel, particularly Bethlehem, did very well. But then he and things became bad. By the time his sons were born, he called them Kilion, sickness, Malon, weakness. 
What names? Marlon and Kilian. Uh, so, names, huh? Uh, mother called, Rachel called him Ben Oni, Jacob called him Ben Yamin, son of my right hand. That's what God wants to keep, make us, keep us, this piece of rock that my call, my, he wants to get, and with nothing interfering, no padding up, no excuses interfering, he holds us tight like that. And Moses uh, said in Deuteronomy 33 verse 12, of Benjamin, he said, you know, the Hebrew doesn't have the J, so it is Ben Yamin, son of my right hand. May the beloved of the Lord dwell in security by him. This is Benjamin's only promise, only qualification. Who shields him all the day? Who does it? God. And he dwells between the shoulder blades of the Lord, between the shoulder blades of the Father. That's Benjamin. But he takes the target. He takes the aim. So all of the tribe of Benjamin were slingshot shooters. David learned it from them or shoots the arrow to target. That was Benjamin's call, ability. Uh, so, son of my right hand, dwelling between the shoulder blades of the Lord, and then uh, shoot to target, and they were to be faithful to Judah. They were sort of kingmakers, not the king, kingmakers, you see, the call. You understand, the son of my right hand, the king will trust them. So Judah and Benjamin were inseparable. And uh, David learned the art and the craft and the science of felling Goliath from the tribe of Benjamin. He learned aim. He practiced aim. I've said this before. He practiced aim by looking after the sheep. He got the last leaf of the last twig of the highest branch of the tallest tree. You can repeat that to your grandchild. Yes, he got it. So they were faithful to king making, to the higher call, or, or, to, or to the senior, Benjamin had that quality, son of my right hand. And, and then he fits so well into the slingshot of God. So with David, David's right hand, and David's sling, and the stone that he, shh, they work together. That, that's a call. And then God then shifted this vision to Daniel chapter 2. I was quite surprised. And this stone that he hooed out of the rock face, rock eternal, hmm? God himself. Look at this, Daniel 2.45. Daniel is interpreting this. Daniel is interpreting this for King Nebuchadnezzar, who saw the dream of a huge statue. And he was very impressed with the statue, uh, King Zah. And Daniel said, O king, that golden part, the golden head, is you. No other emperor will have your grandeur and your glory. But then, this little stone, Daniel said, inasmuch as you saw, Daniel chapter 2, 45. So you can say, I'm a little stone, but in, I'm in the hand of God. That's right. I'm a little stone, but I'm in the right hand of God. I am Benjamin, son of God's right hand. Daniel 2.45 Inasmuch as you saw that a stone must cut out the mountain, rock eternal, without hands, and that it crush the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. That's what the world has. The great God has made known to the king what will take place in the future. So the dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. Reading a little ahead, this is what the king saw. Daniel 2.35, then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver and the gold were crushed all at the same time because you continued looking until a stone was cut out without hands. Without hands. It's a hand of God that takes you the stone and to deploy you launch you. So there's COVID time, incubation time, coring and stone making time in the hand of God with the fingers of God. It is better to fall into the hands of the living God. David said, I'll rather fall into your hands. So in COVID time, we are not going to fall into men's hands. We are not even going to fall into COVID hands, not into the hands of the virus. We have not fallen into a shutdown hand. We have fallen into the hands of the living God. Yes. Then, uh, and without hands, Daniel 2.34, and it struck 
the statue on his feet, iron and clay, and crushed them. And then what happened? Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed all at the same time. Became like chaff. That's the gold we serve, the bronze we serve, the silver we serve. So Christian, we have to understand what God is about. Now, what did we really work for? 90% for gold, silver, bronze, iron, clay. 10% for God. Now we are going to turn it around, isn't it? Work, we have to. And we are going to redeem our work, work stations, work fields and workplaces by living for Christ. But we understand when it is struck, it is chaff. From the summer threshing floor, we have to understand this. We are on an onward journey to heaven. I was praying with a Christian who is now in a very, uh, very, uh, what shall I say, responsible position. And he said, you know, after all, we are on a journey to heaven. And this, there's this launch pad from time to time that comes, incubation time, in the hand of God time. And then we have to take our next destination, take another flight, our walk, what we have to do in that season. And then again we are held in his hand for that time. And we are on an onward, upward journey. So please, don't get too occupied with the stations, what we have to do and become very important. I just wrote today, when there is something wrong and has to be attended, attending on wrong, national level, COVID-like problem, or your son, or yourself, family, workplace, some people will make it a right thing, blame everybody, exaggerate. Some people will say, hear no evil, see no evil, so that a virus is going and so much is wrong. No, no, nothing is the matter. Uh, third kind of people will say, who, who cares? I don't care. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, it's all right, it's all right. Everything will be all right. I don't have to do anything. Uh, fourth kind of people will uh, put their, uh, will say, oh, I am the savior. Let, let me handle it. I can do it all by myself. Uh, fifth kind of people will say, let me work at it. Let me understand it. Let me put my shoulder to it, my hand to it, brain to it. Let me share it with others of similar mind who may be more capable than me. And we get together and find a solution. So for this virus issue also, we have to find a solution. Medical people, medically, epidemiologists, epidemiologically, presidents have to do what presidents do. Thank God for, we have prayed every day for our president. God give him good ideas, good, uh, good wisdom. And we pray for those who counsel him for good wisdom, God ideas, good ideas, expert ideas. And we pray for our health services. We bless them for doing such an excellent work. And we bless our police and military services who have done such a wonderful job. And then we have to do our job. So we won't try to be expert in their job. We have to do our job. That's how we redeem. So we are in the hand of God. Uh, from the, So every station time is incubation time. He takes us back into his hand. Of course, he hooed us once. And he takes us back into his hand again and again. In between, we do the work. And we don't get too distracted with our own importance, too exalted with our own in, in importance. We say, I am only a stone in the hand of God. You know, David used the slingshot. He was so used to it, all his muscles and sinews. And he had taken that aim, practiced that aim. And the slingshot is the call of God. Sling is the call of God. You know, it made out of leather thongs. And he sk And that fell the target. And that was the preparation and the choosing of the day when the whole of Israel knew David will be future king. And then God had already seen that. And then we come to this story in Daniel chapter 2 and there is this stone and it strikes the image at the feet. You have to read all of Daniel chapter 2. And there's an excellent uh, uh, book by John Lennox, the professor of mathematics. And it's a commentary on the book of Daniel. Uh, good to get hold of it and read it through. It's an excellent book. Apologetics, history, archaeology. Yes, a book, a commentary on Daniel. So the stone hits the statue. It was a big statue. Nebuchadnezzar saw it in a dream. And Daniel was there to interpret it. So we need to uh, pray into the dream time, sleep time of heads of state. At that time, God gets to them. Uh, you remember Pharaoh saw the dream and asked Joseph to interpret. 
Then Siddhartha saw the dream and said, who is this Mordecai who has helped me? So dreams come from God because uh, for these kings, watchers of heaven work with them at sleep time. So the stone is launched and that stone, God says will grow. Daniel said this will grow to be the kingdom of God. This will be bigger than any man may think. This stone is the kingdom of God that will grow. Yes, but the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth, the kingdom of God. So this stone is your life, your call in the hand of God. And seasonally he launches you, launches me. Seasonally he takes us back into his making. And then where we were placed, we grow the kingdom of God. We grow the stature of Christ. And whatever growls of a lion, deceptions of gold, the tenacity of bear, or the swift ways of a leopard is not for us. That's how the world works. So book of Daniel is full of allegories and visions about kingdoms. The statue one is about gold, which was Babylon, silver, which was Medo-Persian, uh, then the, the, the belly part, the bronze, which was uh, Alexander the Greek and then iron, the old Roman kingdom, and the feet were iron and clay, which is the last big empire that globalists are trying to set up in the territory of the uh, old Roman empire. Geographical territory, different players, but the same empire spirit. How do we rule all the nations of the earth? What do we use to rule it? Human rights, labor rights, abortion, LGBTQ. What shall we use to rule all the nations of the earth? Uh, what, what shall we do? A global culture of music. What shall we use? Yes, fashion, global culture of fashion. Or shall we use a virus and a vaccine for the global kingdom? So that is this iron and clay thing. You know, iron speaks of the Roman jackboot. Clay, you know, this, that and the other. Mystique, new age, religion, uh, secular humanism, nice ideas, might even be health. What are globalists, the next, the last kingdom, trying to get hold of nations? What will they use finally? They have been trying it, perfecting it. So SARS came in 2003 and this lady virologist of Pennsylvania State University says SARS came and went mysteriously. So since 2003 SARS, COV-1, viruses come, they are all RNA viruses, they come and they go. Don't know how they came and don't know how they went. Or do, do some people know how they came? Now, influenza, a natural virus, is there all the time. But of course, when you make the viral strains or vaccines every year, it's a different health cooking business. But then, SARS came and went, but they made a vaccine for SARS. When they tried that SARS COV-1 in 2003, you know what happened? They gave it to primates, chimpanzees and monkeys and so on. They all died of an immune inflammatory reaction. This is about SARS in 2003 and the COV-1 virus. <clears throat> it came and it disappeared. No one knows why and how, she says. Not me, she says. And then comes COV-2 and it does the same immune reactions in us. So where did that come from? Strange, isn't it? So here we get back to this, not one of my scientific talks. Please take some of those clips. You can write to us at plus 94 77 49 59 214. Uh, so we have COVID science and recent clips. We have done 10. You can have any of them. Uh, just send a WhatsApp message. It's free. My blog, I'm Dr. Lyle Mendes. My blog and my last post, substantive post in a state medical faculty as the head of department of pharmacology. That's why most of the time my expertise would be in pharmacology besides the word of God. But then we were thoroughly trained in immunology, pathology in the Colombo Medical Faculty. So, uh, uh, so here we are. Uh, 
this virus business who is trying to take control of what and build another that that last kingdom of last empire of iron and clay the feet just at that time the stone is taken out at uh, god's hand and god sends it to the feet and the thing comes crashing down and becomes chaff but this stone is your call where god placed you and what i saw was this stone rises up in the nature of christ are you a lawyer are you a doctor are you a housewife a mom are you a businessman what are you are you a teacher nurse in the field god calls you little stone you will overcome the threat the other other example uh, of daniel chapter 7 and 8 speaks of empires as lion as bear gripping everything as leopard alexander the so swift uh, so uh, uh, empires were described as animals or as this image in chapter 2 So chapter 2 image is gold for Babylon, uh, silver for Middle Persian, bronze for Greek, iron for Rome, and iron and clay for this new revived Roman Empire. Who will that be? Uh, so the other day Macron and Bill Gates had a big conference and they're trying to garner G7 and G20 uh, to make this vaccine and put a lot of funds and at present who is the spoke in the wheels? Yeah, you thought so. President Trump, he is the one who's bad mouthed most because he's not agreeing with this vaccine propaganda. There was never a time that so much of it is promoted, and the easiest best drug, hydroxychloroquine, is not given, so that vaccine will have to be produced. That's how intense the battle is, and my uh, COVID science and reason will explain it. So here we are. We have read this. So, what have we got to do? We have got to say, Lord, I give myself into Your hands. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in sweet, full, peaceable grace. Yes. And then. he takes us he he hoos us puts his call into us spiritual genome into us and he knows what he has made us into there are seven character traits or fatherhood abilities that romans 12 mentions i'll do that today romans 12 uh, some or uh, some measure of it is in us so that we will function in our secular fields also with the roman 12 fatherhood abilities god has put into us so we we will be placed and don't fear this huge image whoever rises up to be the image growling or deceptive threatening or sting don't fear because god has called us he places us in the place we are in the milieu amongst our friends and relatives and you will grow the kingdom of god from small in the image of in the nature of christ that's what wins the nature of christ we are not strong by ourselves in our weakness his strength is perfected every morning i get up saying father i need your help and lord's prayer is a wonderful thing to do our father who is in heaven hallowed be thy name thy thy kingdom come that when you say thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven so on my patch of earth as it is in heaven and how does thy kingdom come in that stone that is held in god's hand and he grows it that's how so don't fear it's his hand he gave you so here it's romans 12 that can work for this works for everybody whether you know god or not this is what works in you romans 12 you'll understand when i read it it's quite easy to understand word of god is very sensible i read god's word way back in 1971 that's the jvp year when they had the instruction i was at st thomas's college i had become first in the island in the a level exam yes i did not know i had that much of a brain but at college i was first in every class but that a level 1970 yeah i am quite archaic you calculate my age that's right uh, 1970 december zoology botany chemistry physics i came first in the island and i topped every batch 
every exam I top my batch in the Colombo Medical Faculty. So that's my background. But before I entered, be, uh, just before I entered my medical faculty, that my convictions changed. Before that, my home was atheist, dad was atheist, I was atheist. Because you know, we all believe Charles Darwin struggled for existence. But this one, Romans 12, works for anybody. See this, Romans 12 works for anybody and the truth is that how God has given everyone a fatherhood ability, character ability. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone, so since we have gifts that differ according to the grace, so gifts, grace, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. So prophecy according to the proportion of faith. Now faith is not supernatural only, faith is natural. By faith we marry, by faith we know we marry the best wife and one wife for life. And by faith we get together and produce our child. And th that child we do all we can. We have another child. Now if we say viruses are there, the world is terrible, I don't know what will happen, better not have children. Very foolish thinking. God said I blessed you and put you together to be fruitful, multiply, fill what you have, steward others and take dominion over what is evil. That's the mandate. Yes. That is Genesis 1, 28. So here, what is prophecy? Ro uh, Romans 12, 6 says, he has given this. The prophecy is ability to see and hear what others don't see and hear. You might add, ability to see, hear and feel what others don't see, hear and feel. So what is this? Let's say a researcher, li like the research instinct I have. When you research into some area, you begin to track at the boundary of knowledge, what is there more? So before you think out of the box, better know your box. Too many people are thinking out of the box without knowing the box. That's a disaster. So they, they do mumbo jumbo. So we have to know our box, everything that is necessary about it. So I did this for aspirin. I did this for low dose aspirin. I did this for anti-epileptic drugs. I did this for Parkinson drugs and few other things. So when you are researching, you get researchers hunch that direction. Then the entrepreneurs, they, they know the trends, they feel in the next year or two, we need entrepreneurs like that. We are praying for 24 of them to occupy 24 different fields in Sri Lanka, the gates of provision God has made, and we need those who will be men. That's right. Gates of provision, tea, rubber, coconut, garments, whatever, are aquatic resources, fisheries, gates, God has given. I am speaking from Isaiah 45, and the doors are men who have to arise and say, I'll take that gate and make Sri Lanka prosperous. And of course, in it, we will have our livelihood also. So they see trends. Then the artist, they look at a tree dead and dying, and they see what others don't see, sun is setting, and they draw it up. <gasps> We also saw it, but we didn't see it, the artist. Then the photographer, that photographic vision. You understand that musician, a person that he has perfect, first perfect the known, no? first perfect the known, and then you are strumming or you are playing on the keyboards, and you get into a melody. Where did it come from? You felt it through. You heard it through your temporal lobe into another realm. So you understand prophecy. Uh, so, and it may work spiritually. It may work in very practical ways. You see, this will be the next trend or this is where I need to invest my money. Now, it's a, it's a sort of a left brain decision plus an imagination of the right brain, to put it very, uh, very short, okay? Uh, so, there is prophecy. So, here we are. What, what's the subject? You are a little stone in the hand of God. God hooded you for such a time as this. And he holds you and he launches you in your field. And in your field the image is terrible. Gold, silver, lion growls, bear hugs, terrible. But you are going to strike it at the feet, it becomes chaff and you grow the image of Christ, nature of Christ. In the field God called you. In the community God called you and in the way God called you, and Christ rules. So how does the kingdom of God come? 
in our lives. Every little stone at their shape and size and character and we are forming Christ in our generation, in our nation, in our community, in our work field. God help us. I think that's pretty clear. The next one. Uh, verse 7, Romans 12, verse 7, if service in his serving, that is diaconia is the Greek, those people who are always very helpful, they are very happy helping. Now you may be like, not like that, you may not like to help, but those who are helping, they are unseen helping all the time. In church they become deacons, the Greek here is diaconia, in of, every office they are important. And, and in the ward, they are the attendants, we have a class called attendants, they are all the time helping with bed pants and what not, if they are not there, Hmm. Ward will smell. They do the things that others don't do, but they do it invisibly. By the time we come, it's all done. You understand? Services, diaconia, that needs a humble heart. Then the one who teaches, that is very easy. Uh, the, the teacher's mind, they're generally inflexible. They don't like to be taught, but unless you learn, how can you teach, isn't it? So teachers, they are available everywhere in Germany, of course, they're paid so well. Uh, wise countries pay their teachers very well. Singapore, they, are pray, they, they pay very well. And uh, our country teachers are not paid very well. That's a sad thing. As a result, best brains don't come to teaching, but they actually should teach, uh, pay teachers extremely well. Should pay as well as consultant um, physicians or uh, senior lawyers or whatever. Their teachers are really precious, isn't it? They put their brain into the building of a nation. So what am I talking about? In Daniel's vision, at least Nebuchadnezzar's vision that Daniel interpreted, you are the stone that God whose into your right hand God takes you and he launches you. Then again he takes you back into your right hand. Benjamin, you're Benjamin. Now we get restless because we think all of life is doing, doing, doing. No, some of life is resting in the hand of God. Remember, nothing between his fingers and you. Resting in the hand of God. You're caught in his hand. No pads, no excuses. God squeezes you into his shape. Little painful years, but it is necessary. That's the way God works. After all, we trust him with our pain also, isn't it? Yes. So the teacher, third one is the teacher. Fourth one, that is Romans 12 verse 8. He, he who encourages, he who encourages, exhorts in his exhortation. The actual word here is paraclesis, one who comes alongside. So the, that person is not only really encouraging, he, he, he does not allow you to do nonsense. Just like the Holy Spirit. He, he, he does the best for you. So there is a role like that. You may call him mentor. You may call him human resource people. That you come alongside someone and do the best for that person. That's the vocation. That's the fatherhood ability. That's what the Holy Spirit does. I suppose that's what a pastor should be doing, bringing the best out of other people. Now, they're trainers, you know, they run with them. On your mark, get set. Now, runner may run faster, but the coach is coaching, running alongside. You get the point? And the coach will always coach someone to be greater than himself. That's this gift, exhortation or coach or mentor or human resource or encourager. Anyway, the the... Uh, the, the Greek is paraclesis, the same parakletos that, uh, that is there for Holy Spirit. The one who acts on our behalf, one who comes alongside us, that's the meaning of that. So, the Lord help us in that. Uh, they are very needy, necessary people because they can see the greatness of others. That's, that's this gift. Paraclesis, come alongside. Actually, when, 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 when Paul used that term for the Holy Spirit, the Septuagint uses that in Genesis chapter 2, 15. God looked for a helpmeet for man. Septuagint, the Greek, puts it as parakletos. Because the wife knows better than you what is best for you, husband. Just rest assured, okay? Parakletos. She knows better than you what is best for you. Actually, most of the time, it is true. Parakletos. So that's, that's the ministry here. Romans 12, 8. Parakletos. I hope I did not lose the husbands. He who exhorts, who, who does paraclesis in his paraclesis. That is very, very important. Then the fifth one. He who gives with liberality. Those who are given money, 
to make money work. So everybody does not know. Some people only know to spend money, very operational. But there are strategic thinkers. They have money, but why have they been given money? To make money work for others. This needs Christian thinking. This needs redeemed thinking. Make money work for others. That, that's this ministry who gives with liberality. So they give, they are liberal, why? They don't put it in the stock market. They don't put it, in, it's okay to put a little into their savings. They don't gamble with the stock market. They, they don't play with the money market. They put that money into investments, manufacture, that produces livelihoods. That needs Christian thinking. Yes, that needs Christian thinking. Give liberally, he who leads, then comes the sixth gift, the leaders, one in seven. This one has seven fatherhood abilities. Thank God leaders are only one in seven. And they are, you know what leading is. And they are asked to lead diligently, not liberally, cheerfully, yes, but diligently, which means leaders can't say it's okay. When it is not okay, it's not okay. So you have to uh, call the bluff. You have to uh, uh, t take it, you know, you, ha you, you have to face the flag. So you, you take the bad times, you give the praise to good times, you are the first to come, last to go, that's leader. Diligence. And then finally, seven, though that character ability that goes into jobs, character nature that goes into jobs, that comes from the father, father heart of God, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Why cheerfulness? Mercy people can, their face can be long like the coffee pot, they are merciful, but they are grumbling, no, not like that. We have to be cheerful, so mercy needs to go into doctors, nurses, inner healing ministries. You can see these seven characterhood abilities works in the world and in the church everywhere. That's how God runs his world. God bless you. Please pray for us. Sri Lanka, God bless you. God keep you. Thank you.